Grids are awesome. Masonry grids are even cooler if you know how to do them. Lucky for you, in a few minutes, you are going to know exactly how to do something like this with just HTML and CSS. If we sprinkle some JavaScript on it, we can even do a cool effect like this. Let's break it down. The masonry grid can be a little bit confusing sometimes since the flow is top to bottom for each column and not left to right like every other grid we are used to. Let's grab a few images from Unsplash. Bippity boppity boop. Hop over to our code editor and put them in separate image tags on our website. Give them width 100% and height auto so they keep their width to height ratio but still take as much width as they can. We separate them a bit with margin bottom and now to the secret sauce, columns. This is an awesome CSS property that we can sprinkle onto the div that holds our images and give it, let's say, three. And there we have a masonry grid of three columns. Let's give them some space with column gap. Now this is cool and all, but let's make it even better by having some text appear when we click on the images. To create this, we need to add a class on our masonry grid that we can call active, which can be toggled to hop between the ordinary masonry grid and a masonry grid that has a perspective modifier. In the active class, we put the perspective modifier in the transform property. And back on the masonry grid class, we can put transform origin so that it stays to the left when we animate. Let's add some text in a div with a class image description. We can add an h1 tag. Let's give it an ID title so we can change the text later. And the same with a bigger description under the title. In the bottom, we can have a button that we can use later to toggle back to the ordinary masonry grid. If you want to check out the code afterwards, I've put a link to it in the description. To get the text to the right, let's give our body a display flex, remove wrapping with flex wrap, no wrap, and center it with align items center. I kind of like the font Montserrat, so while we're here, let's put it in the body as well. Hmm, something isn't right. Aha! Don't forget to give the masonry grid a width of 100% and our text a max width of 40 characters. Move it a bit to the right with a negative margin left. I like using display flakes with a column layout so that I can use gap to give all the content some space. The last thing we need is to put the perspective on it. Great! To hide the text when we're in the ordinary masonry grid, we can give it a class hide that we can toggle on and off. Let's give the class a transform of 50 viewport width. Awesome. Let's give the button in the text a function to call on the on click property. Hide description should be fine. We want to be able to click the images as well. And to do it the correct way, let's wrap all the image tags in buttons and let them call the function show description with the index number of the image so we can connect it with some titles and text later. Put some effect when we hover an image. Scale 1.2 should be fine. And a Z index of 2, so it scales on top of all the other images. In our JavaScript, we can use these texts I've put together. Let's create the function show description. First, we want to remove the class hide from our div with the class image description. Then, we want to add the active class to our div that has the class masonry. Oh, and also update the h1 with the title for the image and the description in the paragraph below. In the function hide description, we can pretty much do what we did in the show description, but reverse. Add the hide class and remove the active class. Hmm, hops a bit too quick for me. Let's add a transition property to slow the animation a bit. Oh, and don't forget to add an overflow x hidden to the body class. Amazing! If you want to learn what the different animation properties do, I've got the video just for you right here.